Welcome back to Off the Schneid. Today we're taking a look at the Miami Dolphins draft needs heading into the 2022 NFL draft. Free agency is more or less wrapping up. A couple little things trickling here and there. This team obviously just made a trade yesterday for Devontae Parker, uh, trading him to the, the Patriots in, in division, which is kind of a strange one, but We'll see what happens or how that works out. They ended up getting a third round pick next year, not this season. So they're pretty depleted uh, draft capital wise. They had quite a bit of capital, but made some moves, made some trades. Obviously, the Tyree Kill trade was huge for this team and we'll get there. So you can see the, the draft picks that they do have remaining a third, a fourth and a couple seventh round picks with their you know top team needs, in my opinion. So let's blow through it. Uh, we got... Uh, Tua Tagovailoa obviously is quarterback still for this team. This is the year for him. This is this is it. If if he doesn't succeed and this team doesn't go to the playoffs, I think that that is 100% the expectation. This team absolutely has to go to the playoffs, and I think that they will absolutely push for the division and have a good shot at making the playoffs. They might not win the division. They might end up as a wild card team, but I, I think this is a playoff team and a playoff roster as long as Tua is reasonable so we'll find out if he's going to be the guy or just another guy right that's how i feel about Tua right now if you watch this channel a lot you know I'm, i've never been a huge fan of his if i'm being honest so this is going to be the year it's kind of a make or break year in my opinion he needs to succeed this team needs to go to i think they probably could you know as long as he's just reasonable i think this team could potentially go to the playoffs with teddy two gloves as their starting quarterback so We'll see how it works out. They, they do have a quality backup in Teddy Bridgewater, who's been in the league for a long time, been a starter for quite a few years for quite a few different teams. Um, and I think he could get the job done if called upon, if two is not that guy. But we're gonna find out a lot and we're gonna find out everything I think we need to know about Tua Tagovailoa this year. So we'll see how that works out. Re move over to running back. Chase Edmonds comes in. Um, that's an interesting grab because obviously Mike McDaniel has played against uh, Chase Edmonds quite a bit. When he was in San Francisco, Chase Edmonds was with the Arizona Cardinals. So he must have seen something. He obviously very intentionally brought him over to the Dolphins to have a role. Same thing, obviously, with uh, Raheem Mostert, who comes over from the 49ers and will play a role on this team as well. Uh, Miles Gaskin led this team in rushing last year. Salvin Ahmed had a role as well. So I think they're fine at the running back position. Actually, they're not. I'll, I'll get there in a second. I'll, I'll actually get there in a second when we go over the team needs here. Um, but I do like what they have as far as what they need them to do. I just think that they have a hole and I'll get there. Alec Ingold comes in from the the Raiders obviously it's a Mike McDaniels offense similar to what they ran in San Francisco where my, uh, Kyle Juszczyk is the the most valuable fullback in the game I think Alec Ingold is a very very quality fullback as well he's probably number two for me if I'm being honest and I think he's gonna make this offense that much better similarly to how Juszczyk was used for the 49ers so I think that that's a great get for them and he's gonna play for this team Move over to the tight end, Mike Kosecki, who's just an absolute athletic freak. He's a guy that I've always liked. He comes back on a franchise tag. I, I have no idea why they didn't re-sign him last year. If you, Again, if you watch this and you've see, you saw my Dolphins episode last year, I was saying, why, why are you not re-signing him right now while well, he's still relatively cheap? Because he's not cheap anymore. He's he's going to command a lot of money in free agency, and he's worth it. You know, it depends on if you want to use how you want to use him. Because he's not a very good blocker at all. Uh, but they do have guys that can do that. Adam Shaheen, uh, Durham Smythe, Hunter Long was a third round pick last year, who's obviously still there and improving and should get more of a role this year. But Mike Kosecki is absolutely a weapon on offense out of the tight end position. He's a Mitch mismatch nightmare. Uh, let's move to the offensive line. You, I always preach that you have to leave every draft. Every team has to leave every draft with a defensive back, whether that's corner or safety, and an offensive lineman of any whatever position it is of need. Those are the two places or two positions in every draft that I think that every team needs to leave with at least one. 
This might be a bit of an anomaly because I don't think that the I don't think especially with their only four picks they I don't think they need to address offensive line considering they brought in Toronto Armstead who is absolutely still a stud one of the best left tackles in the game they paid him a boatload and it was worth every penny in my opinion. Uh, Connor Williams, again, another guy comes over from the Dallas Cowboys. He's a former left tackle in college. He played left guard with the Cowboys. He's going to play left guard for the Dolphins. Michael Dieter was a good, I think they moved him to center. That's what I was saying they should do last year. They did it. He's played center last year. I think that was his first year with the Dolphins as the center. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was. He comes back to play center again. Robert Hunt, He's not a left, or sorry, not a right tackle. They, when he drafted, when they drafted him in the second round, he played right tackle for this team as a rookie. He did okay, but I, and he played guard in college, so I think it's a smart move to move him back inside to right guard. And he excelled last year in that position. I think he'll do just as well this year. Uh, Liam Eichenberg, who was a second round pick for this team last year, and I think Austin Jackson, who was a first round pick for this team a couple years ago, I think they'll battle for that right tackle position. I don't think, I think Liam Eichenberg is kind of penciled in as the starter there, but I think there'll be an open competition between Austin Jackson and Liam Eichenberg. Whoever wins starts at right tackle, whoever loses is the swing tackle for this team. Uh, which adds quite a bit of depth. And they have uh, Greg Little, who they got for a seventh round pick, I believe, from the Carolina Panthers. He's another swing tackle that could move inside if they have to. Solomon Kindly still there, who was a fourth round pick and has played some meaningful snaps for this team. He was a starter at one point on this team. So they have a ton of depth. Their offensive line looks very good. I think that that's going to be a strength on this team. Move over to wide receiver. Obviously, Tyreek Hill is, you, you don't need to say much about it. They paid what they had to pay to get him. They extended him. He's one of the best wide receivers in the game. He's an absolute weapon. Supposedly, Mike McDaniel wants to use him like uh, Debo Samuel was used for the 49ers last year, which means he's going to run the ball a little bit. Um, but he's just an absolute weapon and just get the ball in his hands and let him do his thing. That's all you need to do with Tyreek Hill. Cedric Wilson comes in. He, you know, I think they might regret that signing after they were able to get Tyreek Hill because, you know, Cedric Wilson becomes second fiddle. He's, he's kind of a, I mean, he'll be a third stringer. I, I don't think he'll be the slot guy. I think Waddle will stay as the slot guy on this offense. He caught 100 passes, had 1,000 yards last year. I could see that continuing for Jalen Waddle and then Tyreek Hill takes over, you know, as the number one wide receiver which they were kind of lacking last year i think you know waddle just out of necessity had that kind of volume and maybe he won't have as many targets he had 140 with 100 catches so he might not have as many targets and that might pull back his catches but i think he'll still be just fine as a fantasy asset and obviously a real life wide receiver uh, they do need some depth. That's why I do have it on here. They and, and to be honest with you, all of these team needs that I have listed up here, they're all kind of luxury. It was actually tough to find real needs for this team. This is a very, very, very quality roster in my opinion, as long as Tua is the guy. Um, I think that they have a, have a great build all the way through the roster. They added depth everywhere they needed it. They added, sorry, they didn't add depth. They added starters. They added difference makers everywhere that they needed it in the off season and in free agency. Preston Williams is still there. Lynn Bowden is still there. You know, Trent Sherfield comes over from the 49ers as well. River Craycraft as well from the 49ers. Um, those are just depth guys, you know, special teams guys. They might play on the return game sort of thing. Uh, Lynn Bowden, there was some, you know, potential for him to be a slot guy for a bit there, but it's it's kind of died. But again, he's just going to be a good depth guy. You could have him returning if you do wish. So the quality offense, this is a very, very quality offense. It's very much built in the mold of a Mike McDaniel, Kyle Shanahan type of an offense. And I think they will succeed. I really like what they've done here. Let's move over to the defensive spot, side of the ball here and speed this thing up. I don't want this episode to be too long. Um, Again, depth. It's all depth. Uh, where am I looking? Jalen Phillips. Jalen Phillips had a fantastic rookie year. A lot better than I thought he was going to be. Came in at eight and a half sacks and was pretty crucial for this defense, to be honest with you, which is a very good unit. They were very good last year, and I think they'll be a little bit better this year. So if they could add a depth guy, because there's not really much behind Andrew Van Ginkle and Jalen Phillips as far as an edge rusher. So, you know, third or fourth round, one of those two kind of higher picks, two within the 
top 125. I think one of those picks needs to be an edge rusher just to add depth on this team. Um, the defensive line is fantastic. Christian Wilkins is a stud. He is absolutely a guy. There was a little bit of concern and, and the, the bust word might have been thrown around out there a little bit on Christian Wilkins, but it, it he's a stud. He is second on this team in tackles, 89 tackles. That's insane. Four and a half sacks. He's a he's an absolute beast. I, I really, really like what he can do. Raquan Davis was a bit of a steal, I thought, in the second round. So that was he he's quality there. Zach Siler's fantastic. Adam Butler's good. So they're they're great on the defensive line in this 3-4 type of a, a defense. Um, Emmanuel Ogba, I think, was essential to bring back for this defense. He led the team with, I believe, nine sacks last year. He was essential to bring back, and they did. They paid him, and, and he's back to, to wreak havoc on opposing offenses. Moving back, a linebacker, again, it's not exactly a point of need. It is more um, depth. More of a depth position. Now, Landon Roberts comes back on a one-year deal, and that might be, you know, they need to replace him at some point. So maybe a seventh-round pick, I don't know. And they might not even draft a linebacker at all, to be honest with you, because Jerome Baker is very, very good. Landon Roberts can absolutely still get the job done. And Sam McGuavin, who played pretty sparingly, but he's a quality player. I, I think he can get after the quarterback. He's just a little undersized. If he was a bigger body he would be a very good outside linebacker, I think. He's just not that, he just doesn't have the size to get the job done. So he's kind of in flux a little bit, but he's a quality player. Um, corners are in good spot. Zayvon Howard just restructured and, and uh, got a new deal done. He's fantastic. Noah Igbenogny is a former uh, first round pick. He's still there, good depth piece. Byron Jones is fantastic. Nick Needham, I believe they re-signed and brought him back. He's very good in the nickel. Um, so their quality there, they could use a depth piece as, you know, as always, I think you need a defensive back. And in this case, it's a corner because Javon Holland was my number one safety last year. He is fantastic out of the draft, my number one safety in the draft class. And he was great last year. Uh, Brandon Jones, I think, had five sacks for this team as well as being a quality, strong safety. So he's good. Eric Rose still there. Kelvin, uh, Clayton Fajedulum. I think that's how you say his name. He's still fantastic. Not fantastic. He's still good. He's quality depth piece, uh, special teams, and can play in a pinch if you need him to. But realistically, Brandon Jones and Javon Holland will be playing all of those snaps uh, on defense. So this is a very, very good team. I love the way it's built. I really, really, really like this team. There's a very good chance I pick the Dolphins to win this division. Yes, you heard it here first. Um, the one need that I want to talk about, and I think they need to address it in the third round at 102. Um, and it's running back of all things. Why? Because I don't think with the only those two picks in the top 125, the third and fourth round picks, I don't think they're going to be able to add a real difference maker at any position. Um, so I think edge with one of those picks, an edge rusher, which is a relatively deep um, position in this year's draft, and then a running back, but not just any running back, a power, you know, big body goal line type of a running back. None of the guys that they have on their roster right now are, are that body. They're built, none of them are built like that. So a guy that comes to mind for me that I think would fit like a glove in this defense is Hassan Haskins from Michigan. And I think you'd be able to get him in the third or fourth round, one of those two picks. You can get Hassan Haskins who's 6'2", 230, and uh, had 20 touchdowns last year for the Wolverines. I think that he's a guy that if you bring in, you know, he will actually contribute quite a bit to this team this year and I think that those are the only two positions where you where you could get a guy that's actually going to make a difference those seventh round picks are just dart throws you know maybe maybe they turn into something maybe they don't but those third and fourth round selections I think you need to get a guy that can be rotational and that's what I think the edge rusher and running back will be for this team so there you go let me know what you think in the comments there's your breakdown for the draft needs and the, the depth chart how the roster looks and everything like that uh, the draft picks for the Miami Dolphins for the 2022 NFL season. Mm -hmm.